This is the Tom Bigby Tales. I'm your host, Shannon Evans, and this is part nine in the series about Heritage Academy, and this is the financials. Money is a significant topic of discussion for most nonprofits. The financial well-being of Heritage is surprisingly robust, considering they are always complaining to the parents how tight money is. Especially when academic programs and teachers inquire about funding, they're always met with, maybe we can get a donor to cover it in the future, and then it is never discussed again. But lots of things at Heritage are like that. No accountability and no consistency of reporting or informing the parents who pay the bills is rampant. They hope that anything unsavory that happens, like baseball coaches throwing kids into lockers out of anger, teachers and staff having extramarital affairs within the school, and the like will just fade away once swept under the carpet and out the door. The same with the renovation of the bathroom and all the buildings. Uh, sometime, hopefully in the near future, maybe soon, wink, wink, nod, nod, and yet year after year, the plumbing is limping along. The stalls have been patched to the point there is more putty than wood or plastic. We have to remember, Heritage is over 60 years old. The buildings look it. They need a significant renovation, and yet allegedly there's no money to spend for anything beyond the basics. Why? Where is all the money from tuition, grants, fees, sports booster funds, and contributions from donors going? Well, let's look at a few areas of financial curiosity and potential financial malfeasance before we go into the particulars of the actual finances. A good example of problems is the cheer sponsor's dismissal just a few years ago. The former cheer sponsor was a parent of one of the girls on the cheer squad, not unusual. She managed significant amounts of money for the team for their uniforms, which their sets of uniforms uh, cost roughly $500 per student or more, fees for travel, etc. Additionally, the sponsor would ask parents to Venmo money to her personal account for cheer snacks, cheer dinners, and money for fundraisers. The money was going directly to her personal account and allegedly was never put in the cheer fund. The cheer sponsor was allegedly fired from her full-time job in the private sector with a local landscaping business for embezzlement. At the same time, it is alleged that her to keep her out of jail, money was repaid by her parents, who are also generous benefactors of heritage, to her former employer to cover the amount that was embezzled. The cheer sponsor was replaced at this time that she also left her private job, and it was found that there was no money, allegedly, in the cheer fund for cheer mats, something they had been fundraising for that year. The new sponsor allegedly asked to do an audit of the accounts for the entire time the previous sponsor was in charge, but was allegedly told that that would not be happening. <sighs> Sigh. So that money has never been recouped and no one has ever spoken of it again. Again, not something that's very unusual at Heritage. When things are unsavory, they are never mentioned again. Then there is the school's dyslexia funding. The parents in the elementary school whose child require additional dyslexia support pay an additional $500 a month for these services on top of their tuition. Middle school and high school parents pay an additional $1,500 a year. Parents who have had children <clears throat> in the program say that often the help consists of taking a test and the dyslexia support teacher giving the students the answer, a huge no-no in working with students with learning differences. They are incredibly disappointed by the services for their students, as I've been told over and over, and want to know where their money is going and how it is used because it is, per their own words, clearly not being used for therapeutic work with their students. Wow. Let's just look at the dollar figures involved. If there are 10 students in the middle school and high school in need of help at $1,500 each, that's $15,000, plus if there are 10 students paying $500 for 10 months roughly of school, that is 
$50,000 added to the school's coffers. That is $65,000 a year added to the school's revenue. The average teacher at Heritage, who is a master teacher, makes $33,000 a year. Is the dyslexia teacher making $65,000 a year? If not that, then how much? Where does the rest of the money go? Clearly not to supplies for the position as the position relies on the work sent from the classroom teacher. This is one more thing that makes you go, hmm, follow the money. The elementary school only has a part-time librarian because they allegedly can't afford a full-time librarian. The school puts a lot of emphasis on accelerated reading for the students, and yet the students are limited in the time available to them to peruse the library for AR books, accelerated readers, or take the tests with the librarian. Many of the teachers feel they must provide AR-approved books in their classroom for their students to borrow in order to read to meet the needs of those students. That must come out of their own pockets. As the school does not allegedly have money for extra classroom books either. And then there are the financial affairs of the school. These, these are publicly open for review in the form of the school's 990s. They file each year with the IRS. Free sites like ProPublica and the IRS publish them for public review. I will only really discuss the most recently available tax filings from 2022. The content is pretty straightforward. It lists the school's board of trustees by name and that they are all volunteer except for the treasurer, Kirk Hardy, who's paid $12,000 a year to serve in this position. Kirk, I believe, is a CPA in town, and his wife, Vicki, is a former elementary school teacher at Heritage who is now the alumni director. They and their children, I believe, are all Heritage alumni. None of their children attend the school at this time. The school's financials are revealing to me that Heritage is flush with cash. In 2022, the school got a $1,244,242 in government grants and $401,000 in cash contributions. They collected $3 million in tuitions, $378,000 in fees, $64,000 at the gate, and $27,000 at concessions, and had an investment income of $119,500. The total revenue for that year of 2022 is $5,704,961. The boosters raised $124,000. Uh, $44,000 came from a raffle and $204,000 from 21 other events, presumably things like basketball games. They paid, the school paid $2,424,591 in wages. Wages have stayed roughly the same since 2018, but the total revenue of the school has increased from $3,881,000 in 2021 to $5,704,000, actually $705,000 in 2022. That's almost a $2 million increase. While that does include that $1 million to federal grant, which we have no indication in the filings what government grant was awarded, I believe it's an ARPA grant, it's not clear, or how it must be used and when, what are the parameters of that grant. We also don't know where the 401000 in contributions came from or how the school, as of 2022, plan to use those dollars either. We do know that at the end of 2021, uh, or excuse me, 2020, there was a net balance of, oh, I said that wrong. At the end of 2021, there was a net balance of $3,470,418. And that grew significantly in 2022 per the tax filings to that $5,293,661. Yet, the elementary school teachers are spending their own money for books and extras in their classrooms. The high school science labs are outdated and undersupplied. 
The art room is filled with junk and does not have a real budget for the teacher to truly implement a proper art curriculum with students beyond collages and tempera paints and markers. The English department has classroom novel sets that are falling apart or missing pages. The lockers are 60 years old. The paint is peeling in classrooms from the cinder block walls. The bus is old and was used when first purchased and needs to be replaced. The soccer teams have no field to use on campus for training or games. They have to rent fields off campus, but there is an abandoned softball field on campus that the school no longer uses because they cannot field a team for it. The girls for outdoor sports have no field house, unlike the boys teams. There are no long-range plans for improving any of these issues beyond a few empty promises in a daydream or two. The teachers have not had a substantial raise ever. <clears throat> in 2022, after all the bills are paid, they have $5 million plus cash in the bank. And yet your tuition keeps going up each year. Why? What is the big plan for all this money? What is the plan for the grant money? Has it already been spent? On what? Don't you deserve to know the answer to these things? You may think all of these things are lies, or maybe you know the truth and are afraid to speak up because your business will be blackballed or you feared your kids will be singled out and suffer as a consequence of your questions and concerns. Or maybe you know and want, uh, you don't know and you want to find the truth for yourself. If I am wrong, it should be easy for you and the school to set the record straight. Look for the truth. It is out there, just like the tax records. It is all in public records. If I can find them, you can too. <clears throat> Make your own informed decisions about the leadership at Heritage and the MAIS by extension. Then be willing to take action when you find the truth. You are setting an example for your children. You can either be silent complicit, or willfully in the dark about what is happening at Heritage Academy, or you can address it head on, armed with the truth. Facts matter. Remember, the administration is the one who's refusing to be accountable and transparent about where the money is spent, how it is spent, about the qualifications and backgrounds of faculty they are hiring. If you want any of the links to my notes, just ask. Or, better yet, I'll put the tax links um, in the show notes. In the meantime, after looking over the financials, call the board members and ask them, where is the accountability and transparency of Heritage Academy? Their tax filings say they are available upon request. Ask for them. I want to thank you for coming on my podcast, The Tom Bigby Tales. Until next time. <laughs>